Something is wrong. All the arcs have merged. My team and I have been sent to investigate this arc, figure out who is behind this, and put a stop to them within 100 days. G'day everybody, Chaotic here, and it looks like I'm in for a rough landing. I awaken some time after my pod crashes, and as I'm looking around, I am immediately swarmed by Pegos. They must have stolen all my gear. I head to a nearby bush, and I begin to pick fiber and berries, when all three of them jump me. I move on, and I notice a giant desert, where there should be an ocean, when one of the Pegos picks my pocket again. This time, he nearly killed me. Thinking it might be safer on the other side of the river, I swim across to get away from these little pegnokes. And I caught the attention of Bruce. I made it to the shore, and I made a cute mini chaotic. He says hi. I come upon some debris with my phone in it. Hey, I can call the others. Oh, it's, it's ringing. Uh, hello? Matt? Bro? Aaron? Nope, it's something even better. What is this trickery? It's today's sponsor, Chaotic. Tell me more. It's Dungeon Hunter 6, the hottest mobile ARPG game brought to you by Goat Games. In this game, you're not just defeating bosses, you're making them serve you. You can loot, ride, and even fly those bosses. You can summon up the three of them to fight by your side and perform epic combo skills. And when you reach the late game, you can shape shift into them for the ultimate power. That sounds epic, but what else does Dungeon Hunter 6 offer? It's packed with cool creative gameplay elements. You can turn into a stealthy cat on missions, inspired by the actual cat that lives with the developers. Plus, a customizable mount system that allows you to ride awesome fantasy creatures and machines when you meet other players. Turning into a cat? Sick mounts? That sounds awesome. What about the graphics? Dungeon Hunter 6 takes graphics to the next level. Stunning skill animations optimized for multicasting, ensuring the best visual experience and smoothest combat for mobile devices. Oh, I am sold. How do I get started? Just use my link down below in the description to download Dungeon Hunter 6 for free on iOS and Android. And don't forget to scan the QR code if you're viewing this on a TV or a PC. By using my link, you'll also receive a special starter pack worth $50, including 10 summoning scrolls, one SSR Lieutenant Demonic Wolf, and an accessory pack. Damn! That's a great deal. Is there anything else? <laughs> yes! Starting October 15th, you can use your game account to enter the Launch Lucky Spin event for a chance to win fantastic prizes like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, a PS5, Apple Watch, and more. Well, Chaotic, you have convinced me. I'm ready to dive into Dungeon Hunter 6 and conquer this world. <laughs> That's the spirit, Chaotic. Don't miss out on this epic adventure of a lifetime. Use the link in the description to install Dungeon Hunter 6 for free and claim your special starter pack worth $50. Join the launch event and win big. Oh man, I was having too much fun playing Dungeon Hunter 6 and now my battery is dead. Oh well, I better get to work. I craft up some clothes and tools and I went hunting for food and hide when I stumbled upon a new obelisk with what appears to be a summoning terminal. With zero idea what this is for, I head back on my hunt for meat and hide, where I come across some dillos. They, however, were too much for me without my gear, and I had to retreat. As I make my escape, I get picked on by a dick bird. I finally made it to my first explorer note, and this should help me gain some strength. As I moved on to my next note, I noticed some weird numbers popping up, and it distracted me long enough to get bit by flying ants, poisoning my stamina. Oh no! I'm gonna die! Fuck. I carried on through the night and I recrafted up everything cause I wasn't going back. In the morning, a drop started to come down and I waited around to see if I could get some free armor. Let me in. Let me 
that? We got absolute garbage. At least we got a flare gun. Maybe we can signal our friends. I'm over here. Damn, where are those guys? Okay, well, we'll have to wait for them to come. I set up a camp and I have an epic battle with the dodo. As my meat is cooking, I craft up some clothes, bolas, a bow, some arrows, and a boomerang. I pick up my campfire and I set out for the nearby mountain, hoping to score some crystal for a spyglass. Unfortunately, along the way, I get ambushed by some old friends. We hang out for a bit and catch up before I bid my adieus and I continue towards the mountain. Journeying up the slopes, I see some big scary dinos. I managed to slip by them and make it to the top to claim my reward. I crafted that much needed spyglass and I get a bit thirsty from traveling up the hill. So I head down to the river to refresh myself where I ran into a local bully. No! At least I'm not thirsty anymore. I wake back up right where I started and I make my way to get back to my stuff. Oh no! We're out of stamina now. This is the raptor. Come with me, raptor. Not my intention. Oh! I don't want to die here. Oh, he's still coming for me! Ah, <laughs> fucking scared the shit out of me. I try again. No! We get to run out of stamina sooner. They're still following me! No! No, don't bite! No! Oh, shit! Going down! Fuck! And again. Hi. Hi, Mr. Bronto. How are you? Oh, Mrs. Bronto. Sorry, my bad. Didn't mean to misgender you. My biggest problem is I keep doing this trip at night. I keep thinking I need to recover my stuff, and I really honestly don't. It's not that valuable. Why do I think I need to go get it back? I can just make up new stuff just as quick. Mr. Trike. No! No! You! Fucking assholes! My Achilles heel in this damn game, Truidons. Now that it's finally daytime, the Truidon at least shouldn't be an issue anymore. So I set off to try once more. I'm stuck! Run! Run! Run, Chaotic! Oh, fucking Jesus Christ! That shark was not there before. No. Mind your own business! Mind your own business! Oh, no! How? No, oh, I don't need help. Go away. Right, this is my last attempt. If I do not get it this time, I'm done. I'm just going to make new shit. Fifth time's a charm, right? I take a few minutes, craft a bow and some arrows so I can hunt down some dinos for their hide. That way, I can craft up some more bolas. I set off, escape Bruce once again, and then I stumble upon a moss chops who wants tinto berries. I harvest some bushes, and then I get ambushed by some angry little compies. Luckily though, I find and tame a different moss chops while I was on the run that also wanted a tinto berry. Ha <laughs> ha ha, choppy! Choppy and I set off to find my stuff. Now that I have my stuff, I set up a forge and begin smelting metal to upgrade my tools and weapons. On the morning of day four, I make a quick meat run so I could split the stacks and get a ton of spoiled meat to make narcotics. While I waited, I gathered a ton of narco berries and then I crafted a water jar and I went off to go fill it. Once I returned to my smelting area, I made up a bunch of trank arrows. I proceeded back down to the beach so that way I could get a decent granite on. I need to get into the air if I'm ever going to find my team. I find a level 100 pteranodon, and that's good enough, so I knock it out, and then I scavenge some prime meat from a dead sarco. I sit back and wait for my new friend to wake up. And we shall call you Flappy. I return home in the morning, craft myself some soul balls, and keep my tame safe. Once I craft a bed, I set out with Flappy to find some organic polymer. That way I can craft a soul gun. Curious if there were any mantis in the desert I had there. I find a blue drop and then I come across a trench with griffins. 
Interesting. Oh, 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 oh. I'll have to come back here when I'm more prepared to tame them. And then see a mantis. Though I lure it into attacking a stego. I'm all about working smarter, not harder. After the stego gloriously kicks the mantis's butt, I pump Choppy up with organic polymer harvesting, and I collect my just desserts. Oh shit. Sorry! I didn't mean to hit you! Chill, we chill? Okay. Thankfully, the stego accepted my apology. I made my way back and I crafted the soul gun. Now that that is done, I need to start collecting some gathering dinos. That way I can start building a forward operating base. And I begin searching around, gathering notes along the way. Not having any luck finding those gathering dinos, I stumble upon what appears to be Aberration Island. After looting some sexy boots, I see a basilisk. That's a basilisk. Confirming that this must be an aberrant mergent. Aberrant Brachiosaurus. Shit, an artifact. Artifact of the Depths. I don't know what we're gonna need that for yet, but we might need it. I find another new obelisk, and then finally an aberrant Odicarus. But the nearby raptors had other plans for it. I quickly find another one up the cliff, and I begin to trank it out. When I thought she was torpor running, she gave me a quick sneak attack and nearly killed me with gravity. I can't believe I survived that. I ran back around to get up to her. Stopped to heal at a plant species Z for a moment. Yeah, uh, heal me plant, heal me. Once I got back, I noticed she fell down sometime after I did. And after saving her from another raptor, I got her sleeping like a baby. While I was waiting for her to tame up, I went off in search of the other gatherers I'll need. I headed towards the volcano and discovered that the trees here are different now. I keep moving up the mountain while keeping an eye out for an Anki. When I discovered crystal wyverns, not willing to pass up free wyverns, I made my way all the way to the top of the mountain, gathered some crystal, and I set off to tame a low-level blood wyvern. After clearing out some more raptors, I flew above my target and I jumped on his back, potted Flappy up, and I fed him his first crystal. He took off into the air, and I suddenly remembered I don't have any parachutes. Hopefully I can hang on long enough to completely feed him. Hanging on for dear life, I feed him carefully every time he was ready to eat. And it wasn't long before he was mine. I named him Count. Being greedy though, I set my sights for another one. And I found a 145 female. But she was next to a car chart. And I really wasn't in the mood to take that kind of risk. So I moved back up the mountain where I stumbled upon a 150 female. It's my lucky day! So I repeat the process, jumping on her back and going for a ride. Wait, that sounded dirtier than I thought it did. In me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. By midday, she was finally mine and I named her Countess. I know, a very original name! We went to retrieve the Dodic and then headed out to investigate more of this strange island, while keeping an eye out for an Anki. Flying through the north, I came across a giant skull rock. I flew inside and mined up some obsidian, and then I found some nests in the lava. Where are the Magmasaurs? Yoink! 130! Sneak, 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 another 138! Dun, dun, dun. Another 130, yeah. Since I now have Magmasaur eggs, I scoop some sulfur to feed them later. And then I headed back to my forge. And as I was nearly home, I come upon an Alpha Raptor. And after killing it, I got a serious upgrade for my hatchet. On the morning of day 8, I mowed down some berry bushes and crafted a ton of narcotics. And drank arrows, plus four billboards. I set off to the snow regions to tame a mammoth. I found a small herd of them with a 130 male. My luck is strong. I start trying to trap it in my billboards when a pack of wolves decided to say hi. Ah, oh, the fuckers killed it! Well, I guess the lower level ones will have to do. Problem is, my health is dropping fast from this extreme cold. Though I have to bail. I take a trip to the hidden lake and I find a strange terminal that might be connected to the forest titan? Are the titans the cause of this merging then? Interesting. While thinking about it, I find a 140 beaver and I scoop it up. And I head back to my forge. 
Once I made it back, I quickly trapped it up, and I sent her to Dreamland. And while I waited for her to tame, I worked at setting up fires to try and hatch my Magmasaur eggs. In the morning, the last egg hatched, so I started imprinting one of them while I waited a little bit longer for that beaver to finish taming. Once she was up, I called her Lucy. I then headed out to find myself a new home. As I was flying around, I spotted a giant castle in the distance. So I checked it out. It was very spacious, with a large front yard, perfect for growing an army, and very well fortified. Well, except against the cold. Oh well. I place down a lone foundation and I get to work on crafting things to keep me warm. On the morning of day 11, I gathered some more metal, grew out my other tames, and pretty much started to make myself at home. I crafted a Dodicara saddle, smashed some rocks, set up some storage, before setting off to steal some paste. On the way home, I seen an Evo Giga. Evo Giga, level 95. I tried poking at it, but I quickly retreated. Oh shit, that's a big bite radius. I thought, oh my god. Damn. Okay, we'll have to. Archer 145. What? Suddenly, a flare popped right up in front of me. Holy crap. Somebody here. Who's flare? Nat, you made it. Yeah, I did. Crow. <laughs> Crow did it though. We crashed near a cave system, and a giant ice worm ambushed us and dragged Crow away. I could hear his screams down the tunnels. There's... there's no coming back from that. Oh man, not Crow. I need you to find this ice worm and take it out, before it causes any more problems. Don't you worry, I will avenge him! Yeah, take this charger and report back when it's done. Now that I got a charger for my phone and my first objective, I need to get myself some caving creatures and some better gear for this cold. I start off by slowly crafting some fur armor. Still needing a little bit more fur, I take on the mighty Wooly Bracky, hoping it might drop some. I have to keep my guard up as one stomp from this behemoth will surely kill both Countess and I. I trick it into falling down the cliff and I perch above it and take it down easily, gaining a ton of meat and hide. Sadly, no fur. So I go after the usuals for fur when I see an Anki. Finally! I knock her out and gently feed her berries. I head home to finish crafting my last fur armor piece while I wait for her to tame up. It wasn't long before my Anki was up. Although I forgot to name her, we all know she's Spanky. I wasn't long putting Spanky to work and gaining a ton of much needed metal. The next day I took Lucy out and I whipped her into shape. I then started to place down the first of what will hopefully be many foundations. I built three more forges to get that metal smelting way faster before moving everything else onto the stone foundations. I crafted a cooking pot and four metal billboards and lastly, some bullets for a pistol that I got from that Alpha Raptor I killed a few days back. Now that I'm ready, I head to the Redwoods to tame my favorite tame, the Mighty Thyla. I'm going to need one for that ice worm cave, so I fly up the river's edge, keeping an eye out for sheep because cooked mutton is their favorite taming food, just behind kibble. But I wasn't able to find any sheep, so I carefully moved into the Redwoods and after a short flight through the trees, I find my first Thyla. What? What do you think the chances are coming across a 135 female are right off the hop? I scoop her up, and I take her home to more open territory. And I set up my billboards to drop her in. Okay, I said drop her in. Ah, there we go. Well, you know the drill. Now that she's down and taking a nap, I take a moment to fly around the map trying to find one little sheep to feed my new girl. Giving up on ever finding a sheep, I head back, mow down the grass again so I could get narco berries, and I feed her just in the nick of time. That was tight. Holy shit. With no mutton, I have little choice but to give her prime meat. So after hacking up a couple of dinos, I feed her some. While I'm awaiting her to tame up, I search around for a male. Suddenly, I see a Thyla jump off a tree and charge a bear. 
I move over to check it out, and I see it's a gorgeous 140 Paleophyla. An arm twister for sure. It's a Paleophyla 140. No, no. Do I want it? I know I want it. Fuck me. All right, it's mine. <laughs> I drop them in and I repeat all previous actions. Oh, I was wondering what was going to happen first. You go down or my bow go down. And once things were good, I went to go look for a female paleo. But it was starting to get dark. So I just sat around and I waited out the night. Flying around in the morning, I find three of them sharing a tree. And one of them is a 145 paleo female. Damn! I get her in the trap and I make my way home to repair up and craft more trank arrows. And then I return to send her to dreamland. Down she goes. Nighty night, girl. The male was finally tamed up in the morning of day 17. Hello there, big guy. Welcome to the team. And she was up on the morning of day 18. There you are, girl. We headed home, got comfortable, and I gave them their names, Lizzie and Jizzy. And before you knew it, Jizzy got Lizzie knocked up, living up to his name. And we shall call you, we'll call you Gyla. Gyla. I took Gyla out for a quick meat run, and it felt awesome to be riding a Thyla again. It wasn't long before we had a baby Thyla. I imprinted her up, and I left her to grow up. I gathered some berries the next day, and I made some scissors, dye, and I gave myself a much-needed haircut. That's looking better. Nice. I still can't believe that Crash burned all of my hair off. I headed out to explore around, and I found a 145 mana. I am very tempted to tame one, but after just spending three days taming Thylas, I'm not quite feeling it. Maybe later. I scouted that cave that Nat told me about, one where Crow unfortunately perished. I discovered the obvious, and after whipping Countess out, I continued my exploration of the area. Looting drops, grabbing some notes, slaying another alpha raptor, I also find a flock of wyverns atop the mountain. Good to know there might be a trench here. The morning of day 20, I stumbled upon a cave entrance in the Aberrant Island. But without my Thyla grown up yet, Oh shit. Oh shit, they noticed me. Oh no. I'm kind of forced to explore it later. I continue on, and I fuck around with two Alpha Carcanos. And before I find out, I leave them be and I return home to craft a new long neck. And get some gunpowder crafting so I can make it some ammo. My Thyla is all grown up in the morning and I name her Rose. Rose and I head out for a nice walk and murder everything to level up. Getting ready to avenge Crow, I craft up some healing brews and I set off for this cave. I arrive by the morning of day 23 and I set in. I rush some bears and after taking them down, I see a blood trail. Blood. This might be Crow's. I better follow it. Chaotic. Is that, is that you? Crow, you're alive! Here, take these. Thanks. That thing that attacked me went deeper into the caves. It left me here for its babies. Well, I'm glad they didn't get to you yet. Nat sent me here to avenge you. I'm glad I don't have to now, but I'm still gonna go take that thing out. Well, I did hear a lot of rumbling down there. There must be dozens of them. Don't worry, bud. I got this. Here, take my Thyla Gyla. Nat made a camp at this location right here. Great. I'll head there now. Thanks, Gaddick. Relieved Crow is still alive and well, I still need to take out this Ice Worm Queen before she kills someone else. I head in, and I'm not long being ambushed by her babies. Oh shit, here's the Ice Worms. You got this, Rose, you got this. I kill, eat, repeat, and work my way down this ice layer, fighting worm after worm. Sometimes two at a time. Grabbing loot crates as I find them, all while slaying even more worms. Bro was right about dozens of them. In the morning, I fully heal Rose and I jump down a huge waterfall. I take a quick look around and I see nothing. Anybody home? At first. She pops up, 
surprising me with her massive size. We battle it out, trading blows. She deals massive damage to Rose, hit after hit. She's whittling Rose's health down, bit by bit. But fortunately, Rose's bleed damage overwhelms the beast and she falls. After I score up a bunch of loot, Char Char Saddle Blueprint, bigger damn. I noticed how deadly this worm can be. She must have really been weak and taken down that Giga. I find a weird totem before grabbing the artifact of the pack and I head out. Oh my god, cha chaotic. Crow made it back to camp safely. Nice job saving him. That's not the only thing. I killed that ice worm. Crazy to think she's here. I wonder what else is now on this arc. Don't worry. We'll figure that out in time. All right. Bye, bud. I know I got my work cut out for me. It's time to start gaining better tames. With my new long neck rifle, I get Lucy out and I gather up a ton of narco berries when suddenly I hear howling. I try to fight them off, but I'm quickly outnumbered and overwhelmed. Rest in peace, Lucy. Ah! Oh. After getting revenge and picking up my stuff, I carried on harvesting with Countess. In the morning, I went out to look for a replacement for Lucy. A strong mammoth is a better option, but as I'm looking for one, I find a high level greater UD. I got a feeling I might need one of these for a few fights. I separate it from its carnos and I attempt to trap it. It's a bit of a struggle. Okay, okay, it's a UD. They are always a struggle without using net guns. But I do manage to trap it. I outplay the carnos and then I finally knock them out. While I wait for the UD to tame up, I knock down a 145 mammoth. I return to pick up my very handsome beauty as the mammoth is taming up. I hit up some drops until day 28. After that, I build a greenhouse to start a garden as I want to begin kibble production. That way I can both tame quicker and get a better taming bonus. While building, I get my first wake up call. Oh shit, they followed me into my house. Or howl, I guess? I need to get a gate up or something soon. Or I'm going to keep having uninvited guests. My mammoth was up and after rescuing him, we went home, crafted a saddle, and I named him. Mane. Manyth. Manyth. Then we went out to work gathering every ounce of narco berries in the area before finishing off my greenhouse. A sexy female mammoth walked into my front yard and Manieth is looking kind of lonely, so I figured I should play matchmaker and introduce them. He approved, and he helped me gather her berries. In the spirit of love, I set off to find my pretty boy Yudi a girlfriend too. I come across a level 55, and I let her off the cliff to try and freehand rank her. Aw, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Yudi saved me. Even though she just saved me from falling, she played super hard to get. But eventually I managed to get her down. Down she goes. While waiting for her, I hunt for more loot. Nice! Pump action shotgun, needed that. Oh, the mammoth is up, better go check that out. I return home, and I let her and Manioth have some alone time. While they are busy getting it on, I make my way back to that cave, hoping to find a dung beetle. I then head down into the cave, killing off some Ravengers before finding a dung beetle. I tame it, name it, and I stumble upon an artifact. I had a baby female mammoth with all the good stats early in the morning, and she is now called Ellie. And after some quick gathering, I headed out to find a beehive so I could run the SS Nanny. And along the way, I see another flare. Hey, who's there? Hey, Chaotic. Aaron! Holy fuck, you're alive! Well, you know, it'll take way more than an exploding pod to take me out. I was just trying to find some honey when I seen your flare. Dude, you know what? I've seen a honey cave on one of those floating islands. It's, uh, it's right here on the map. Oh, sick! Hey, Nat's got a camp up over here. Go there, bud, and we'll meet up later. Oh, Nat's over there? Yes, yeah, sweet. I'll see you there. See ya! 
I make my way to the location Aaron told me about. It's on a giant floating island. I find the entrance and I gather up a ton of nearly free honey. I head home and I craft an SS beehive and the nanny. My needs for future dino breeding are nearly met. I craft up some grapples for, you know, just in case. Before I headed out, I thought I would get the Yudis laying some more eggs so I could have some kibble later. I then crafted up a shotgun, ammo, and a ghillie suit, and I made my way back to the desert so I could check out the Griffin Trench, and I got distracted by a red drop, where I seen a school of itchies stuck in the river, so I tamed up a high-level mating pair. I then found a suspicious opening in these ruins blocked by rocks. I was able to smash them apart and make my way in. I killed off some creatures and then I came across my worst nightmare, our core. I pawed up Rose and I began to jump my way across. I see a bat and I try to kill it, but it bites me, giving me rabies. Once I kill it, I keep myself alive with healing brews and I jump to the next pillar. I respawn outside. I make a new sleeping bag and some transfer tools and I head back in to discover I can't transfer off a dead body. Great! I unalive myself, fly back to base, craft some more grapples and a bed, and I grab some crossbows and I make my way back to the cave. I make it back in the morning. I place down the bed and I run back into the cave hoping nothing has respawned yet. I jumped my way back to my first corpse and I took aim. Success! I continue jumping pillar to pillar, crossbow in hand, making sure to catch myself when I fall. Well, until I don't. Jumping back again, pillar to pillar, I reach out and just barely get my stuff. Launch a final grapple to the end and land safely where there happens to be an artifact, so I grab it. And that's when it shows itself. Rose keeps biting away at it, causing one hell of a bloody mess. Biting and clawing, its health goes down little by little. Dodging boulders as best we can, it finally succumbs to Rose's bleeds. Looks like you still can get blood from stones. I claim my loot, and I make my way back out of this forsaken cave. And I got a feeling that bigger and stronger things await me on this arc. And Rose isn't going to cut it alone. So I went out in search of something bigger. I've been keeping an eye on him since we tamed Countess, that 145 Paleo Karchar. Oh, you're getting a little hurt. I got him trapped though? I do. Okay, 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 okay. He's out of the gates! Or he's out of the billboards! Needing to heal all of my health, I head to the Aberrant Merchant. And I find a plant species Z to heal by. And then I head back to get the Karchar into the trap. I get the honor of trying to figure out how to tame one of these things, because I've never done it before. <laughs> Ouch! It was simple enough though, and kind of fun. Kill something, drag it over, let it eat. And once it was ready, I jumped on its back and went on a massive killing spree. But I soon learned if he gets hit, we lose taming effectiveness. And by the time he tamed up, he was so low on taming effectiveness, it really wasn't even worth it. All right, buddy. Didn't tame up with a shit, but. After that, I found a beautiful buck and doe rex. Paleo Tyrannosaur, female and male. Interesting. I wasn't long making them my friends too. After that, I found a gorgeous looking low level female car charge. But she was slightly difficult to tame to say the least. I had a hard time getting her in the traps and when I had her in one, she wouldn't even eat. She disappeared for a while and I had a hard time finding her. It was a long couple of days, but I eventually finally managed to barely get her trapped up again. Hansi! 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just eat up. Why don't you? Take your time. It's not like I'm standing here waiting on you. Guess that works. And then after a long process of feeding her and taking her out for a quick trip to munch on things, she tamed up and I took her back home. Once there, I get all my new pairs enjoying their new mate's company and I even crafted up some kibble. I begin day 41 off with some egg hatching when I suddenly get a call. Kiara, we found something. A huge power source located at the base of this mountain. I'll have to check it out. This could be the answers we seek. Alright, I'll go check it out. I set out to find this power source, and I quickly find a cave entrance at the coordinates that Crow gave me. And I make my way in there, where I discover the artifact of the void. Once I pick it up, bright light illuminates the back of the cave, and I'm drawn towards it. I find three dwarven statues, each with the names of the Fjordor bosses on them. These look like summoning stones. I head back and I get to work to breed up a small army to take them on. While my babies are growing, I gather up some much needed items and I even craft a Magmasaur saddle. I gather up some metal and I finally place a gate at the front door. I give Badonkadonk a saddle that I had found earlier and I take him out for a massive meat run, killing everything I could find, even an Alpha Carno. I finish off the day by raising my first baby car jar. I built an industrial grill in the morning, and then I set off to see what I could find. I stumble upon another cave at the Aberrant Island. With my curiosity peak, I enter the cave. Oh, radiation, radiation, radiation! We are not exploring that cave yet. Okay. I quickly discover I'm going to need a hazard suit to survive the radiation. I set back off to explore around and gather aberration sky drops, hoping to score some pieces of hazard suit. I check the engrams after a couple of drops, just to jog my memory on its requirements. I need congealed gas balls to make the suit, but in order to get gas, I need red gems to make the gas collector that only spawn in the radiation zone. It's a bit of a catch-22. Okay, so radi radiation will not kill us that quick. It will kill us, not that quick. My thought is, if I were to run in there, see if I can see some red gems, and then if I got time, grab, grab them before we die. Taking some risk out of failure, I dump everything into my wyvern. Before charging in, clearing out any threats, gathering the red gems, and getting the hell out of there. Let's go, 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 go. Oh. Oh! Now, all I need to do is craft that collector, and I can explore this cave's depths. Mission success? <laughs> Leave it to a fucking Merlovia. Let's make that gas collector. We'll get the gas going. And we'll be able to explore that cave better. On day 44, I picked on those Alpha Carcanos again. And after killing them, I discovered they respawned right away. Oh, just two more Carcan Alphas here? I just killed the two. Interesting. Now, well, I'm not going to pass up from the free chibi experience. I begin to breed my Blood Wyverns finally, and I'm not long getting the stats I want. And I spend the rest of the day repairing and crafting. And when night comes, I expand out my foundations to spread out my workspace. While I'm still waiting on babies to grow, I take on a new challenge. How many artifacts can I get in two days? I start off with the central cave and I quickly grab some sexy loot and the artifact of the clever. I then head out to the lower south cave and grab the artifact of the hunter in less than two minutes. Up next is the upper south cave and I expect no problems here. But it is a slightly longer cave, and I get hung up going down, and I get spit on by an Arthropleuro. I grab a sick shotgun blueprint, and I dodge some Sarkos grappling up to the artifact room. <laughs> artifact of the pack complete, now to get out. I ran into a slight issue, and accidentally left Rose behind.
I left her. I can't believe I left her. I'm about to pass out, but at least I'm safe. After waking up from my poor snap, I mount a daring rescue on foot. Running by everything and jumping onto rows, mission success. Apologize, girl. I didn't mean to leave you. Once I was out, I head to the lava cave, and that was just easy peasy. All the bats I fought so far, and I finally get rabies. Holy shit, I was starting to wonder if it was even turned on. I pop out of the cave to find a Rex trying to get a free snack out of Countess. Okay. I guess we're no longer leaving Countess outside the cave. I head to the Carno Cave, and other than being momentarily startled... Oh. Hi. I easily grab my loot and the artifact of the Devourer, and I head home. Now, to prepare to take down those Fjordor bosses. I need to craft some saddles, and I'm low on pearls. So, after whipping up a few out of a river, I slice up some bushes for fiber, and I craft a Yudi saddle, and a bunch of wreck saddles. I then prepare a place to put all of my artifacts and trophies. Once that was all built, I placed my Ice Worm Queen head, and I sat back and looked. This is just the beginning. Back on track, I throw out all of my boss dinos, and I saddle them up. Potted them back up. War Ellie. See, we got Ellie and War Ellie. It works out. And then I set back out to that Fjordor cave, where I set them all out ready for battle. Ready for the moment of truth, I walk up to the statue to prepare to summon Bela in. Damn it. They require tributes. Of course! I head back to base to see what I got so far. There's an avocado right there. Well, that was lucky. Needing five more raptor claws and one more carno arm, I head off into the wilderness searching high and low, playing alpha after alpha after alpha. And once I had enough for all three, I returned home where my new bred up blood wyverns and car chars were done growing up. I finished off the day placing a brand new industrial cooker and crafted up a bunch of replacement healing brews. I hatched out a ton of backup wyverns and named Countess's new successor. All right, we shall call you Sorry. On my way back to the boss summoners, I got distracted for a moment. Whoa! The fuck killed it? Oh, a Zeep. 140 Zeep. I wonder if I can... Guess I can't. We'll have to get some other prank darts. I'll have to come and tame that later. I take both of my new imprinted car chars and I walk to level them up. And then I get ready to take down Bela. While she's being drawn to us, I buff up the squad, and as she arrives, I send them in. She struggled with all her might, but she quickly fell to my hordes of teeth. Hell yeah! Dun 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 dun! I grab a Dermis as evidence, and then I summon in the twins, Haiti and Skull. They too put up a good fight, even managing to damage the army a bit, but in the end, they were history. I scoop up their dermies as well, but with a weakened pack, I make a bold decision to press on. I give the crew a rallying battle drum ceremony to lift their spirits and summon in the final creature. This should be easy too. This massive stone bear spawns in, and we begin our duel of fates. I quickly notice that this one has damage resistance, and my Rexes are not doing enough damage. And seeing it dish out even more than the previous fighters. It's not long before my Rexes begin to fall, one by one. Oh no, they're starting to fall. The fight encroaches on me, and I have to readjust. We were slowly chipping away its health. 
Mistakes might have been made. Don't die on me, Rose. But it's not enough as more Rexes fall when the worst finally happens. Rose falls too. No, Rose! All the Rexes are gone, and all that's left is two car chars and Battle Ellie. They put up a good fight, trading blows back and forth. We might have won this, but suddenly both my car chars were slain. No! Double no! And with only Battle Ellie left, she screamed at me to run. And run I did. Her sacrifice will not be forgotten. We're out, we're out, we're out, we're out, we're out. They're all dead. We became underprepared. I have to recover the saddles somehow. I sneak back in and I ninja my saddles and I return home. So, uh, hey, Nat, I got two of them down, but that bear just ripped my army apart. Uh, well, that sucks. But defeating those first two, however, has dropped some of the safeguards, preventing us from hacking into the mainframe. But we just can't get all the way in. So, I'm gonna have to go back and kill that bear then? Yes. Yes, you do. Ah. Uh. Any suggestions? I mean, these Serratos seem to have a healing buff and probably greatly improve your survivability. Oh, cool. I'll have to look into getting some. You know what? I I'll send you the taming method we discovered. Nice. I return home to begin replacing my lost tames and gearing up to go on a taming spree. I upgraded my forge to something a little more modern now all I need to do is get some tranks, hemoglobin cocktails, and to tame a tanky creature for these Serratos. I set off on the morning of day 55 to find the perfect high level Stego, but I instead came across a 145 Paleo Theory stuck on the trees. I wasn't about to pass that up. I trapped her up just in case she was playing stuck, and I pumped her right full of tranquilizers until she passed out. I scooted home to pick up some narcotics just in case she attempts to wake up before she's done being tamed. After she tamed up, I found and deleted another Alpha Raptor and I carried on looking for a high level Stego and a mate for my new theory when boom, I found a 150 male. Oh, male 150 theory. I had him down by the early morning and instead of sitting around, I carried on looking for that Stego. I ventured through the trees, up the river, and over the mountains, killing an alpha raptor, and then I went into the desert, when I came across a 145 Paleo Stego, and she is gorgeous. She will be a nice addition to the collection. After she's down, I noticed she already had a boyfriend nearby, and I kind of felt bad, so I went to knock him out too, but I ran out of trank darts. Ah. Noticing that the female doesn't need an entire piece of kibble in order to tame up, I ran down to the beach to harvest some bushes for berries when I whipped up something else. That's a basilisk! It's an alpha basilisk! Oh no! Oh! What the fuck? Waking back up at my base, astonished as to what the hell just happened. Oh, but that wasn't a wake up call, nothing will be. I grabbed some tranks, Countess, and Badonkadonk, and I flew back to recover my stuff. Badonkadonk and I charge into a very deadly game of dodge that spit. Oh, shit. It was rough and a long fight, but I somehow managed to pull through and claim victory over the beast. That's another Alpha Basilisk. The female Stego is up, and I potted her. So much for saving that one little piece of kibble. Once the male Stego goes down, I move over to take out that second Alpha, before it becomes a problem too. Once the male Stego was up, I stopped by and picked up my other new fancy boy, and I headed home. Suddenly got a call from Aaron. Hey, so we got a signal boost. There There appears to be a distress beacon coming from this floating island. Oh, look at that. I'm not that far away, bud. I'll go check it out. 
I fly up to the floating islands to see where the signal is found, and I come upon a very friendly face. What's what's that? Kind of sounds like Pegos and Kitty. Oh, hi, Chaotic. I see you've got my distress beacon. Don't worry. I'm safe here with all my cute little Pegos. Right. Cute. Oh, I'm glad you're okay, Kitty. Yeah, I found this portal room over there, and it took me to a spaceship where I tamed all my little friends. I did get lost for a bit, but I found my way out. A spaceship? Interesting. I'm going to have to go check that out. Oh, Hey, here's a wyvern, and the team's camp is located over there. Go meet up with them. Ooh, she pretty. Bye! After seeing Kitty off, I investigate these teleporters and find myself on exactly what she described. A giant floating spaceship. After exploring both sides and finding nothing of immediate concern, I head back to base. I get to work reading all of my boss dinos and more. In the morning, I grabbed one of my stegos and I headed to find a breeding pair of Serratos. And I quickly find a 130 female. After forcing my stego to drink up the hemogoblin, I let it chew on us until it was drunk. 100%. I fed it some kibble candy and it became my best friend. I'm sure that's how I became friends with some people before too. Get drunk, share snacks. Yeah, that's the best way to begin a friendship. <laughs> Options, change name. We're gonna call you Cersei. Cersei you? Cersei. I searched far and wide for a good male, but with no success, I settled on a low level one with pretty pink spikes. Bro and Kitty are gonna love this. Once he was tamed up, I went home and I let him and Cersei have some alone time for the night. In the morning, I was raising up some baby car charts so I could take down that bear. And I took Badonkadonk out to try and take down an Evo Giga. In order to tame one of these things, you need a Giga Heart. That way, it'll accept your challenge and fight you to the death. So after powering up Badonkadonk with his good old blood rage, we charged in and we were quickly overwhelmed by the Evo's power. We attempted to retreat. Mm, stop shitting, you fucker. I'm trying to run away from the Giga I was trying to kill, but my car char won't stop shitting. But after a good chase, we finally managed to get away and get the heck out of there. I made up some gates and I returned to attempt to trap this powerhouse so I could kill it. But a wolf might actually beat me to the kill. Like there's this one wolf right underneath its foot, it can't hit it. It's just chewing away at its ankles. I sneak up on it and I attempt to join in just as the wolf made a critical mistake. I attempt the same shenanigans the wolf did but I am taking a beating and I gotta run for the trap. I snap down the last gate. That was close, but I see I have a new challenger. I bring out Badonkadonk thinking this will be an easy fight. As the battle rages on, my Karchar's health is chipping away fast. We're both getting bloody and I'm not sure if we're gonna win when suddenly a pack of wolves join in. Oh, that ain't good. Fuck. After recovering my stuff, I take pock shots at it from the sky. Keeping a close eye on my jailed Giga, I continue my assault. And oh my god, the Giga got out. Fuck sakes. <laughs> we battled it out until night, where I finally slayed the beast and avenged Badonkadonk. Holy fuck. I returned home, bruised and battered, and I named a replacement Badonkadonk. And I just sat there and waited for my babies to finish growing up. On day 63, I potted up my babies, crafted some saddles, and I returned to finish off that boulder bear. 
Taking a page from Aaron Jaeger, I whistled my army and attempting to hit it while it was spawning in. The Karchars and Sciartos were smashing Steinborn, pushing it off the edge and jamming it into the door, causing most of my Karchars not to be able to hit it. I whistled them out of the way, allowing them to get in better and continue their assault. After a while, my team started to get dismantled, one by one. It's not a good sign. Steinborn pushed them up and out and out of the hole, fiercely attempting to take down my army. I throw out what reinforcements I had and I send them in. Roaring with my Yuri, Steinborn is getting weaker and weaker with every passing second. Oh, that one's about to go down. Come on, come on, come on, go down. Oh no, he died. Oh, but we got it. Holy shit. Fuck, we got it. I gotta call Nat. You think that will stop me? Uh, hello? Who's this? I shall not be stopped. My new guardians will make sure of that. Guardians? What are you talking about? Who the fuck are you? I am your god. You will not stop me. Oh, that was weird. I collect my loot. But unfortunately, they ate his body, and I was unable to collect a memento of this grand occasion. I returned home, wondering what the others may find. Out and about, exploring around, I come across a sunken ship and a 150 Maywing. I attempt to trap it, but I accidentally clubbed it in the face. Oops. Sorry. I broke one, son of a bitch. I was on my way home when I got another call. Hey, I see you got Steinbjorn down. The network opened up immediately and we found a huge problem. Ah, great. It must have something to do with what that god said. God? Oh, uh, I... Yeah, that makes sense. There are three bosses that are new to this arc. They seem to be the key to figuring out who this god actually is. I'm assuming they're at those new obelisks. Correct. Prepare your tames as we have some beasts to slay. All right, I guess I'm preparing for another fight. I returned home knowing I need bigger teeth. I named one of my imprinted car charts Chomps, and I set off with her to take down one of those gigas. Once I filled her blood rage to max, we charged into a lower level giga. The imprinted bonus went a long way as we didn't even struggle taking this one down. Feeling confident, I went back and I took on that other one. And it too fell quickly. Alright, that's three Giga Hearts. Now I just need to find something worth taming. I set off to look around and another one spawns in as I'm walking. That's weird. A new one that respawned right away? I guess I did just kill two Gigas and two Karchars. Maybe there's something off with their spawns on this heart. I put Chomps away and I flew up for 30 seconds and I see another one. This is just crazy. Now that Chomps blood rage is gone from being potted up, I throw out my other car charge to help his backup. Oh, now there's two of them. I shoot the one over and I lead it right over, right into my trap. Once it was dead, I slayed the other and I went for a walk around waiting for the next one to summon in. And that one was a 150 female. Couldn't have asked for a better one if I tried. I fly home to get my stegos, and once they are saddled, I head back to that giga and set up my gates to trap it. I gain her attention, and she walks right to my trap, and she starts sniffing the hearts in my pocket. I place the trap. Dude, did it damage my gates? It totally wrecked my gates! I run hard and fast with her chomping on my heels. And I quickly think, wait, there's a cave nearby. And I try my best to get to the entrance before she finishes us off. Fuck me for the cave, for the fucking cave. Don't be looking down at me like that. With that angry girl outside, I throw out one of my stegos. If we can't trap her, we sure as hell can trap ourselves. She chews on stego, after Stego, after Stego, until she finally tuckers herself out. Oh, he's down. 
She's down. Ha ha ha! I was starting to wonder if I get her down. There she is. Once she was up, I took her for a walk through the park. And then I named her. Not all. But the best I got. Sorry. Now all I need is a mate for her. Nothing special. Any male would do. So I get out chomps and get her rage up. We took on a level 55 male. And it was much easier with the health regeneration on these car chars. Ha <laughs> ha, he's down. Back at base, I got them set up to, you know... <laughs> I decided I wanted a shoulder buddy, so I grabbed my element from the Fjordor bosses, and I set off to tame a bear ox. After finding and doing the round of feed and run, feed and run, I named him Gizmo once he was tamed. Like the one that I had in my Genesis 100 days. Hopefully this one will last longer than that one did, though. It's another one of my favorite number days, and I start off by throwing out some baby gigas. I put on some scuba to hit up the easy ocean cave, as I need the artifact for the wyvern queen. But I got chased out by an Alpha Moza guarding the entrance. I'm about to die. Alpha Moza, tiny itchy. Not, not good combo. Swim, little buddy, swim! Okay, he lost interest pretty quick. Oh, I changed my plans to hunt down and tame a Basilo so I could actually fight these things. But I didn't find any as I searched and searched. But I did come upon the hard ocean cave. And I thought, I could run in there quickly, grab the artifact, and get back out easily enough. I was dead wrong. Go, 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 go. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no! 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 Oh! The stakes were made! Oh, that ain't good. How am I not dead yet? Fuck! Rip kills mode. I rushed back with my other itchy to get my stuff back. That went about as well as the first attempt. So much for this being my favorite day. Fuck. If I am to get my stuff back, I need some new tame. Something more durable than those itchies. Like a Baslo that I started searching for to begin with. So I crafted up some kibble and I set off to the desert to claim some more easy itchies. After grabbing one or two, I return home, craft up what I need, and I head to that water bubble in the Crystal Isle zone to see if there's a Baslo there by any chance. Spoilers, there wasn't. I checked the lakes on the floating islands, still no luck. Lots of sharks though. I guess I'm gonna have to go into the ocean to find what I need. I throw out one of the itchies to saddle it up, and as I potted up my wyvern, a shark came in to say hi. I saddle her up finally and I take off to get away and I run into the shore and I get stuck with Zeefs on my tail. Now they're eating my, my itchy because it's stuck. Fuck's sakes. You fucking c I return to my free itchy location and I'm out of luck as it's out of stock. I check the shallows on my way back home to find no Baslows or easy to tame itchies. When I came up upon a Dinosuchus, I race home, grab my ghillie, and check to see if I looted a saddle for them. I have a really damn good blueprint. That's good enough for me. Taming these giant crocs is actually pretty simple. As long as you got the nerve to run up and shove food down its gullet. I set off with her to attempt to get my stuff. We swim our way down and try to take out eels that ambush us until we find where our stuff is. Fortunately though, I had an alpha megalodon follow me, so I'm forced to take evasive maneuvers. I take refuge out of the water at the back of the cave. I take out some of the locals that are living here in order to heal up a bit and make my way around to where the cave drops off to exactly where my stuff is. After falling in prematurely, I lay claim to my soul balls but there's still a ton of sharks around, so I lead them away, doing a complete loop around. This time, healing up 100% before jumping in. There are still way too many sharks to fight here, 
but in all honesty, it's the damn eels causing the problems. I try and try to get them to follow me away from my stuff, but in the end I'm forced to retreat back to the surface to heal up some. Wondering if I'm wasting my time and if I should just give up, I shrug it off and dive back into the abyss. I get everything following me all the way to the back of the cave. I loop around for the third time and I jump back into the water. Seems to be only eels here now, so I kill them off and I swim down into the hole just far enough that I can pull my stuff. Victory at long last! I have everything! I return to the surface, name my new champion. Yay, that took so long that all my baby gigas starved to death. Nice. Fucking waste of time. Once home, I throw out some more babies and I build a couple of more feeding troughs to keep them fed. In the morning, I take my Nato out for a walk. And it took me most of the day to gather enough meat to feed these hungry, hungry gigas. But the remainder of the day, I went out to explore the city that I've been avoiding. And much like Earth, it has corrupted dinos too. I wandered into the city when I heard bickering in the distance. Is that? Yep, that sounds like Attic and Ninja. Oh, hey, Attic, you found us. It, well, we were really lost. I have no idea where I am. Guys, guys, guys. I'm happy you're all alive. But what are you doing here? We've been looking everywhere for you. Well, we were actually looking for you and the others, but we couldn't really seem to decide where to go. Well, we should just go south. Come on. Well, you're both wrong. The team is based over there, and I'm set up over here. Oh yeah, we hadn't gone there yet. <laughs> hey, tell Kaotic what we found. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a, a Titan terminal up uh, one of these buildings. Uh, it shouldn't really be here though. Oh, I found two other Titan terminals nearby. That can't be good with everything else I've been figuring out. I'll go check it out. Are you two good to go find the others? Yeah, yeah we're, we're good. good. All right, I'll see you later. I locate the terminal as night approaches. It's for the Desert Titan. I wonder if these are those guardians that mysterious god was mentioning. I must clear out those other guardians before it's too late. I awoke in the next day to find my gigas all grown up, and I named one of them Crusher. Now I need to get the remainder of the items I need to assault my first guardian of this arc. I'm going to have to recover the artifact of the immune, so I need a megatherium for that. I wasn't long finding a decently high level one. While she was taming up, I hit up the easy ice cave and fought my way into claiming the artifact of the Skylord. I returned to my now tamed megatherium and I named her. Big Booty Bitch. The return of Big Booty Bitch. After the legendary ones from my previous adventures. Nat, I have not seen a single alpha crystal wyvern. Have you guys had any luck in finding any? Mmm, no, but I'm sure we can procure you one. I'll, I'll have the rest of the team searching for one now. Awesome! I should be able to gather the rest on my own. Have you figured out where the artifact of the Devious is by any chance? Well, yeah, the, the download of the Ark's hidden location and items are now complete. Send in your PDF of all artifact locations now. I head to the Wyvern Trench to gather the Artifact of the Devious. That was quick. Artifact of the Devious. Then it's off to the Redwoods for the Artifact of the Immune. Since I don't have a gas mask and I'm kinda time crunched, I opt in to just tank the spore damage with the healing bruise and crush all of the bugs with BBB. After grabbing the Artifact, I attempt to leave as my healing bruise are getting low. Oh boy. If I make it out of here alive, it might be a miracle. <laughs> I just needed like 10 more healing brews. I would have been fine. Mission success. Oh, Chaotic. We left a present for you at the castle. Enjoy. Give her hell, Chaotic. Ah, nice. An Alpha Crystal Talon. Thank you, Nat and company. 
only one artifact left to get, the Artifact of the Brute. It's in the Easy Ocean Cave. Knowing that we are much tougher now than the last time I attempted this cave, I swim down and right past the Alpha Moza guarding the entrance to the cave, and I leisurely make my way in. I march my way across the water and land until I come across the artifact room, where I have to fight off a swarm of eels in order to claim my prize, and I happily make my way out. All that's left is to get the tributes I need from the local wyvern, and after crafting up some net projectiles, I headed out. I tranked out the wyverns to milk them for their primal crystals, and then I killed them for their talons once I was done. And by day 79, I was all ready to go to fight the crystal wyvern queen. And after setting up my army of rexes, fairies, serratos, carchars, and a couple of gigas, plus my beauty, I made the sacrifice of my tributes and teleported in. Once in, I jumped on my beauty and whistled my army out of the way and right into battle. They charged in with ferocity that I've never seen before chomping and slashing at the queen. She isn't long before she's overwhelmed and takes flight to get away. I strategically move my army into position against the wall, so when she swoops in for its attack, she can't easily escape and get out of the way. My tames give her some more of a thrashing. She gets weaker and is forced to land or recover. I whistle the team in for another full-on assault. She flaps her wings in desperation to push them back, but they are resilient to charge back in, and she takes off once more. We continue this back and forth until she finally succumbs to the numerous blows. Victory is mine. Nice! We got her! As I return home to hang her head on my wall, get another call. Your victory means nothing. I will rise. Man, this guy is just starting to annoy me. But hey, at least his minions are making great ornaments in my base. One down, two to go. I headed to the city to fight waves of corrupted dinos at a red drop to try and get some better loot. And I began to munch away, and all was going well until a huge horde engulfed me. I was unable to get away, sadly losing a Giga. I sprinted away and released a new one, and I jumped on it just in the nick of time. I returned to the drop with a little bit more caution. But the drop has been badly damaged. I fight on, killing corrupted after corrupted until the drop was destroyed. Oh well, at least I got a bunch of hearts. I might need these later. After I grabbed the artifact of the gatekeeper that wasn't too far away, and the destroyer on the giant skull rock on the way home, I get ready to take down these other guardians. I pop out my army at the Manticore Obelisk, and I name them all after my wonderful Patreons. Links in the description. I set off to gather all the wyvern talons I need, and I had all the talons by the end of day 82. And with my army of Serratos, Rexes, Karchars, and Gigas, I activate the terminal. After teleporting in, I scramble to get on my Yudi, and I whistle my massive tames out of the way. And I begin to power them up, while the Manticore swoops around looking for his moment to strike. And he finally finds it. But after taking a quick beating, he changed his mind. I keep buffing my beast when he comes back for more. Look, he also has friends now. Oh shit! Forgot about those things. They didn't last long at all. And my army began to chew down the Manticore's health in no time. With low health, the Manticore decided to taunt my tames for a bit, swooping around just out of their reach. Can't say I don't blame them, there's a lot of teeth on the ground. Turns out this was all a ploy, so he could wait for more reinforcements. With only a sliver of health left, the Manticore must be completely panicked right now, avoiding the jaws as best he could. But alas, he must have tired out, landing right next to the massive teeth that swiftly finished it off. All right, this will be it, this will be it, this will be it. Get him, 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 get him. No health left, got him! Down he goes. Two down, one remains. 
I will stop this guy from taking over. His minion heads look way too good on my wall. Now to get the remaining artifacts for the next boss, Cunning and Skylord. After placing down a gas collector so I can make a hazard suit for the radiation cave, I headed to the easy ice cave, and I threw out Busy to help guard me, and I began clearing my way back to the artifact of the Skylord. Where I had a small run-in with a cloud of bats, one of them giving me rabies, but thankfully I still have plenty of healing brews. The battle raged on until I was out of ammo, and I was forced to fight the last one with my hatchet. I then claimed the artifact again, and I swung by home to repair up. Die, you son of a bitch! Die! Holy fuck! Yeah, we're not fighting this one. We're just getting out of here. And then it was off to get all the Apex items I'm going to need. On day 85, I cleared out the obelisk area for the king of all monkeys and I get my army into place. All I need is that final artifact. It's back to the hard ocean cave to get that last artifact. Hopefully this time, it will be a little easier now that everything was kind of shifted throughout the cave. Swimming to the hole was nearly lifeless, but inside the hole was a completely different story. I swim on to the other side and I check behind me. Looks like nothing was able to follow me directly and got stuck. I jump off, grab the artifact. Now we gotta do is escape through that fucking wall of hell and we'll be good. I sprint through, trying to make it there. Come on, go, 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 go. Holy fuck. And I make it there easy peasy. And you were worried. Now, are you ready? I jump on my UD and I scream some encouragement at my tames. And we march into the king's lair. Following the dark tunnel, it opened up into a clearing when I seen the Dinopithecus king snoozing away. I guess I'm gonna have to wake him up. Hey, wake up. Please tell me I don't gotta shoot it or some stupid shit. That's what I thought. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Now that the slacker is finally awake, I whistle all my tames onto him. But he also brought an army with him too. And it went all chaotic from there. I kept losing track of the boss while my tames were being separated by the monkey hordes. And shortly after finding the king again, my giga enraged and started killing my dino. Oh no, I'm losing Rexes. Those team killing fucks. Then suddenly it went really foggy. Like, really, can't see shit foggy. Tames were falling left and right, poop getting stuck to my face, and something was nipping at my Yudi's feet. Can't see! And suddenly I am removed from my Yudi, and I can't see where it is to try and get back on. I run aimlessly through the fog, trying to find something anything to ride with an amargo on my ass i find a car char and i attempt to get on it but it moves right into the reach of one of my enraged gigas let me on no that was some fucking bullshit I awaken back at my base, and I receive a call. You have failed to stop me as I predicted. My titanus monstrosities have arrived. My revival is nearly complete. Taken aback by my loss, I know I'm going to have to rebuild my army in order to take them down. I take a quick stock of the blueprints that I have, and I rebuild everything that I lost. I call the crew to inform them of my failures. Eyes failed to beat them all, and it looks like his plans are nearly complete. Don't worry, we'll get him in the end game. Looks like all you need is a couple more things and then you can lure those titans to you. Uh, Ninja, where are you? What are you- Dude, 
I have no idea where the hell we are. This place is insane. I head to the swamp to find the artifact of the growth. And it takes me a little bit, but I managed to find it next to some old abandoned houses. Oh, anybody home? Nope, nobody's home. The artifact of the chaos, however, was much easier to find, as the griffin trench is tiny. I just need to get my army ready to bring down the titans and put an end to this. Once the army was leveled up, I set off to get the remaining corrupted hearts, and I grab my wyvern army. And I set off to bring down the desert titan. After leveling them all up, I insert the tributes and lure in this massive Zubat. There she blows. I whistle the flock in and I begin to fight. No! Oh! The wyverns dive in and begin their assault, biting and flapping away. I take opportunities as the fight goes on to dive in for an attack or two. Dun 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 dun. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Keep moving. Keep moving. And we fight well into the night, dodging, ducking, dipping, diving, and dodging, un until the mighty beast fell to my swarm. Got him. It's on to the next Titan, the second strongest, the Forest Titan. I cleared out the area, powering up my car char, and placed down the bait, and I lured the Treebeard out of hiding. Come get some, big guy. I whistle in the car chars and gigas, only for the gigas to immediately enrage. All the gigas have enraged. Rip carks! and crush their lesser cousins into the ground. With them enraging, I try my best to avoid both my own tames and the forest titan, running away anytime something heads my way. Dude, he doesn't give a shit. He's coming straight for me. Ow! Dude! The fight's under your feet. Oh, he's gonna walk up here. Ah ha ha ho! As the fight progresses, I kept losing dino after dino. Not to the Titan, though, but to my own tames! The Titan must also be aware of this, and he keeps charging for me, knowing that I am the commander and his victory lies with me dead. But thankfully, I'm too quick for that giant tree, and it too fell. Down he goes! Once I had my tames picked up and I found my loot, I set off for the final titan. Confident with my army, I place them out and I lure in the final challenge. The gigas charge in. There they go. The ice titan attempts to get some distance from the fury of my army and he scales the waterfall, leaving my gigas feeling a little short as they're unable to bite. Dude. That wall climbing son of a bitch! So I'm gonna have to whistle them around and catch back up to the beast. They charge back up and they start nipping at the titan's heels as I blast away from the back of Busy. The fight continues on through the night. The Giga's biting and raging. Oh, they're enraging! Not gonna do any good when he holds them in place though. And with the titan slamming away, I start to wonder, Oh! Are we going to be able to take this thing down? I throw out some backup car chars, wyverns, and the damn kitchen sink. Blasting away with the little backup I have, Tames dying left and right. I run out of shells for my shotgun. So, I pull out my last car char, I put Busy away, and I charge in for one final stand doing my best to bob and weave the attacks. Oh, I got him! Dun 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 dun! Fuck you! 
<laughs> we got one wyvern left and one gotcha. Ah. I have arrived. You find yourself in the presence of Sir Edmund Rockwell. I have survived more than you could ever be capable of imagining. And this is all you can muster to challenge me? I rush home to prepare to fight Rockwell and bring this madness to an end. I spend the next couple of days gathering and crafting better gear, and I prepare a new army to take him down. After collecting up a bunch of blue gems to make a hazard suit, I set off to explore the radiation cave finally, and hopefully get that last artifact. After pulling out a giga to walk around in, I find a radiation free spot at the back of the cave. Then I stumble upon a rock drake nesting site. Interesting. I quickly dispatch them, and I attempt to steal their eggs. Spoiler, they all spoil. I carry on deeper into the cave, and I find some reapers waiting for me. Thinking I'm big and tough with my giga, I quickly find myself losing, pushed into a wall with no escape. My giga dies, and I do too shortly after. I craft up some more hazard gear, grab a new thyla, and I rush back to the cave. I throw some glow sticks on it, thinking that might help. I get roughed up by some rock drakes that respawn, so I retreat, and I heal up at a plant species Z. I take a moment to head home to grab a new giga, and once the thyla is fully healed, I head back to the cave. I deal with the rock drakes with my giga, and I get my stuff back. Thankfully, the reapers moved away from it, and I took my giga to the back of the cave in order to ball it up, and I left for home. I return back to the radiation cave on day 96 with a car char, and after getting its stacks up for its glorious healing, I found a little feather light, so I tamed it up, and I finished off the reaper that caused me so much turmoil, and I grappled up to find the last artifact I need for Rockwell's lair. The next day I went back to the rock drake tents for a ride that I can shoot off of, you know, a rock drake, and having cleared out the only two eggs that spawned in, I head to the back of the cave to de-render the nest to see if new ones would spawn in. While I waited, I fed up my Karchar as he was really hungry. Once he was full, we went back in to find more rock drakes had spawned in. Hopefully they laid some eggs too. Oh, that's the 60. 175. Nice. All we needed. Bye, bees. I returned home and got my new eggs incubating. And while I waited, I released an army to level them up. The rock drake eggs were ready to hatch on the morning of day 98, and hatch them I did. Once they were imprinted, I found myself staring at my trophies of this adventure. Glad I managed to put in the effort I did thus far. So thank you for joining me on this incredible journey. You are awesome! After that, I headed out in search of a decent rock drake saddle. And I went through drops like crazy, turning up an awesome amount of nothing. I returned home to find my team waiting for me, ready to help me take down Rockwell and save this Ark from his desperate grasp for power. We had some laughs while gearing up and getting ready to take him down. My friends, tomorrow we ride to take down Rockwell. And it will be a tough fight, but I know with all of us here, we will be victorious. Rockwell will be put down for the final time, and he will never be a threat to us again. Oh, yes! Yeah, yes, we did it! Woo! Yeah. Fucking heck! Yeah. yeah! Am I allowed to bring an ice cold canteen? In the morning, as we were getting ready to head out, we heard a maniacal laugh in our heads. You cannot defy a god. Behold the might of Edmund Rockwell. Let's get him, bitches! <sighs> Chaotic, go. We'll hold them off. You go take down Rockwell. I won't let you down, guys. Everyone, charge! <laughs> Everyone, use not as cover! No! <laughs> 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 Get him!
Come. Go, 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 go. Good luck. I arrive at the terminal and I get out the army and I portal my way into his lair. It's time to end this. Once in, I find myself in a familiar room. I guess he prefers his aberrant dungeon here too. He goes on and on about shit, but I don't care. And I whistle my army in her position and I begin blasting away at his tentacles. Once they are all down, I get the army attacking his now vulnerable heart. And I repeat step one, knocking down those tentacles one by one by one. And once they are all down, he retreats below into his element pools. Like the coward that he is. He returns, angered by my comments about his bravery, and ups his strikes with electrical attacks. I take my time, shooting them down, avoiding stepping in the electrical field. He goes down again, and my dinos pulverize his heart some more. One more time around the merry-go-round, and I start to notice that my ammo is already at half. In my haste, I forgot to grab the remaining ammo I had made. In some way? Did you see? Without me, there is no future. But for now, the Reapers are here. And they will make this so much harder. As they are hard to kill and they deal tons of damage. And they spray you with this acid that slows you down. I continue pelting Rockwell's tentacles and I finish them off. I hope my army does enough damage this time to take him out. But alas, it wasn't enough. And it's back to cutting down his tentacles. And I'm starting to get really low on bullets. My last hope is to take him down here and now. And that motherfucker drops into the abyss. I take a moment to clear out some of the Reapers and Nameless. And I look around for the army. They are not in good shape. Shit. Now they're starting to die like crazy. I need to hurry it up and hopefully 70 shells will get all these tentacles down. The last one fell down with only 17 bullets left. I rush in to help my tame. He must go down here or I lose this fight. No! Oh, I don't got enough bullets left to finish this off. Rockwell is besting me again. Damn it. I attempt to get away to do something, but my rock drake is super low on health, and I'm super low on ammo. With no tames left to distract him, the reapers are coming. Well, I tried to stop him. Hopefully the team made it. Well, I guess it's up to you. This server is open for all who want to play on it for the time being. So come and try your hand at this awesome mod, and hey, Check out my other content right here, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!